Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today we've got another amazing article from themarysue.com. And if you've never been to themarysue.com, I recommend don't go check them out because of articles like this. As uh, as you can see, the, the title pretty much says all that you need to know. Why the next Big Bang Theory needs to be written by women. Yes. Everything in this world needs to be broken down by race and by gender according to the social justice warrior nonsense people. What they do not understand is that if you just write it for that very small group of people, and again, it is a very small group of people. They might be in the, you know, they, their philosophy might uh, be accepted at the higher realms of politics and Hollywood itself, but it's a very small group of people because guess what happens when you try and make a social justice warrior film or a social justice warrior series? It doesn't do well because when people watch it, and I said this several times before, and I'm going to keep on saying it, people watch movies and television shows and any part of media culture to escape. They want to escape from the monotony of everyday life, and also, too, they want to escape from the problems of everyday life. They don't want to just be reminded of it constantly, but also, not only that, but they don't want to be preached to. Again, unless you're going to watch a documentary, unless this is going to be a documentary about nerdum, <laughs> then why in the hell does it have to be written by women? Why can't you just say, I hope the next Big Bang Theory stays on target? I hope the next Big Bang Theory uh, deals with uh, different issues instead of just going off on these random tangents. You know, actually breaking it down from an objective standpoint. Just saying, oh, you know what would fix Big Bang Theory? Oh, if there, were, there was women writing it. No, that, that's not how it works. Just ask the box office for Ghostbusters 2016. Oh, you know what Ghostbusters needs right now? It needs an all-female cast. No. No, it doesn't. That was a film that no one wanted. And guess what? You know what else no one is asking for? A new Big Bang Theory written by women. Oh, but I guess that's just my, my white male privilege. But you know what? I'll just have to check that at the door, I guess. But, oh, my goodness. Let's let's just see what they have to talk. Let's see what this – and, again, this is from uh, – let's see. Who is this? Kate Gardner. Kate Gardner writes <laughs> – just so many amazing articles for this site, but let's just go into it. Today, the curse was finally broken, and CBS announced that the Big Bang Theory was blessedly coming to an end. And I, I will say this: I loved Big Bang Theory for the first three or four seasons. I fell off from it for a while, and I heard that it's kind of gone through a lot of major changes. I hear that um, that it's just kind of. And not even that it's gone through made the change, but rather that it stayed so consistent. It stayed it stayed the same so much that it's gotten boring. That it just doesn't do anything different. And in that, in the fact that it refuses to make any type of really major change, it just stays uninteresting. Now, of course, that's just from what I've heard from people who have kind of given up on the series. I personally liked the series enough just because I thought that the comedy was actually pretty spot on. I thought the comedy was pretty great. There was some really great commentary on a lot of things in Geekdom and a lot of things on fandom that I thought were very well done. So it might be a series that I eventually go back to, especially now that there is an end in sight. I might actually want to go back and watch the entire series just to see what actually I missed, to see if the opinions and the thoughts of all the people that I talked to about this were true. You know, again, this is coming from someone who has liked Big Bang Theory, again, for at least the first three or four seasons. All right, let's see what it has to say. The long-running series has drawn frequent criticism for its depictions of women, people of color, and disabled characters. It oftentimes turns them into punchlines for the audience to laugh at rather than well-rounded characters. And there it is once again. All that matters in this world, everything, nothing else matters except for race and gender. That's all that matters. And if you don't think that's what matters in this world, then you are a racist and a sexist. And guess what? It's that kind of logic that gets you no views and gets you no money. Just saying. The show also is a horrible way of viewing nerd culture. Through the eye, uh, though an argument could be made that the terrible Leonard with all his grossness is a pretty accurate depiction of white male nerd entitlement in which fulfillment, or no, he's just a nerd. How about that? He's just a character written as a nerd. You know, you can say whether, you can argue whether his character is well written or poorly written, but for you to say that it's an accurate depiction of a white male nerd entitlement and wish fulfillment and gross. That's just your subjective view. Again, you can talk about having a poorly written character, and you can make those points. You can make those arguments. You can point to parts um, of his character. You can point to scenes, point to lines that he said that prove that. But just to say, oh, he's gross, and he fulfills this so-called white male no fulfillment, it, entitlement nonsense, you're just, again, preaching to whatever choir it is that you're preaching to. Stories about geeks are popular because geek culture has become something easily commodified and marketed. But films and television series centered around nerds, fans, and others who operate inside the culture tend to be written by white men to be about white men and take a more mocking look at what it means to be a geek. Again, 
Every single thing has to be broken down by, by race. No. How about this? For a simple fact, when you look at the vast majority of comic book readers, when you look at the vast majority of people who are actually taking in this content, who are they? Usually white men. But even then, just because a story has white male characters, just because a story has certain characters with certain backgrounds, does that mean that that is just for them? Last time I checked, in that group of friends, not only are there women, and not only do those, did those female characters get added in more as the season went on in a very good way. I thought the integration of those characters was very well done, but also... Are you forgetting the fact that there is a that there is an Indian character that's been on since the very beginning? Oh, but I guess since that person is not a enough of a person of color, or unfortunately because the entire group isn't people of color, that that's why it doesn't work. If it was if the entire group was a person were people of color and there was that one white person, then it would be okay. Again, if you're breaking things down by white, black, and whatever, that is where your problem is going to lie. How about instead, is this a well-written show or not? And again, I have heard several people give very good, strong arguments as to why a show is bad. But the fact is, is that we keep falling into it. Rather, these people, these SJWs, keep falling into this mindset that something is good or bad based on the race and the gender of those involved. That's, that's a problem. Because again, when you're breaking everything down that way, guess what you're doing? You're dividing people. You are dividing people and you are creating this division. And guess what? It doesn't help society. It does not help the culture. As much as you think that you might be helping, you're not. You're actually making things a lot worse. All right. That forgotten comedy centered on a group of friends, all white with one token woman, plot to steal, plotting to steal the Phantom Menace before it was released. Okay, that was talking about fanboys. Uh, talking about, oh, Lord. The worst scene is when the gang is being tested on if they're true fans. They ace uh, trivia questions, but when it comes to a question about sex, they're all stumped. Save for our token woman. That apparently proves they're, they're, they're true Star Wars fans. Not the best joke. It wasn't funny back then. It's even less funny now. I think that's actually kind of funny because it's a commentary on geek culture. Now, do I think that it's fair? Do I think that it's, you know, it's 100% accurate? No. No, absolutely not. I mean, there are people out there who will call people like me who talk about Star Wars all the time insults. Again, people who are never going to marry or never going to have sex, etc. But you know what? I'm a married man. And the fact is, I'm a married man. And sometimes people just don't want to admit the fact that there are people of all various backgrounds, married, single, gay, straight, black, white, doesn't matter where you come from, who are part of nerd culture. And just because a character or just because one show happens to feature certain characters of a particular race, of a particular gender, does not mean that that show is just for those people. Again, this is going back to that same conversation that we've been having about Star Wars. The fact that people are trying to say that we needed Rey so that women could have a character that they could connect to. When you already had women who could easily connect to Luke Skywalker. Because Luke Skywalker's character was a universal one. It did not hinge or did not rely on him being a male. He just happened to be a male. And this is the problem, again. When you break things down in this way by gender and race, and when you actually start to put those thoughts that you're putting out there to scrutiny, they fall apart. They disintegrate because they just don't hold up. They don't work. And you just make yourself even look more foolish. Interesting enough, it's the YA literature that has seen the rise of a more nuanced take on geekdom, primarily through female authors who include a more diverse array of characters in their books. Rainbow Rails, Fangirl, Anne Breschel's Scarlet Epson Hates It Here, Hannah Moskowitz and the Kate Elson Gina Finn. Guess what? All those are series that I've never heard of. And you might say, oh, that's because you're white male. Yeah, but the last time I checked, who's reading those books? Who's buying those books? I bet a very specific audience, but guess what? It's not going to have a wide appeal. For the very reasons that you're pointing out there, because when you as a writer, when you as a creator focus more on gender, focus more on race, try and make that your sole focus instead of a good story, guess what's going to happen? You're going to isolate your audience. And guess what that does? It separates. It divides. That's what it does. That's what, again, social justice warriorism. Again, you can say that that's an offensive term or not. It doesn't really matter because it's just telling you what it is. It's someone who trying to, again, push their own political ideology on someone else when in reality all that it is and all that they're doing is just trying to make excuses for why their products aren't working, aren't succeeding, and trying to blame race and gender for it instead of the fact that, no, the reason why it's failing is because you focus so much on race and gender that you lose elements of the plot. You lose elements that people are actually interested in, that are actually engaged in. 
It's the same reason why I can talk about Black Panther. The same reason why I can talk about Luke Cage. There are obviously things that I cannot connect to from a cultural standpoint. But I can at least respect that there are certain elements of that that are still well done and well written. Now, I can also have my critiques of it as well from an objective standpoint. Things that aren't well written. Things that aren't well done. But guess what? It's the same thing. Just because of the race, just because of the gender of the individuals does not create good or bad content. It's the content that does that. But, as I said, if your content is based on nothing but identity politics, that is where you're going to fall apart. That is where your narrative and your the strength of your narrative is going to either make it or break it. And when you just focus on those things, guess what? It's going to break. And again, never heard of any of these things. Again, these, again, they are obviously for a very specific audience, but guess what? You're not going to get that wide range appeal. And guess what? Just because I have not heard of it does not mean that I am some sexist, that I am some white privileged sexist who's never ventured out to these things. The reason why is because there are stories that are written for certain people. There are stories that are written, that are written for general audiences. These are obviously not written for general audiences or else I would have heard of it or else other people would have heard of it or else these would have been more mainstream titles. But again, when you get so caught up in yourself, when you get so caught up in your own identity politics, guess what's going to happen? No one's going to listen to you, and no one's going to buy you. Anyway, guys, what are y'all's thoughts about this? Do you think that this, and again, I haven't really even gotten into the whole Big Bang thing because Big Bang Theory is dead. Long live whatever comes next. Just let it be about women. Again, that is their, this is pretty much just the, the overall uh, sentiment when it comes to these SJWs. It's like, no, let's be about women, people of color. In fact, just like female women of color, if we could even get that because that would be the, the coup de grace. In these people's minds, they judge people, they judge product based on diversity. And while diversity is a positive thing, while diversity is a good thing, if you are going to force diversity for the sake or at the sake of a story or a narrative, and then you get mad when people complain because your narrative or your story isn't very strong and isn't being well received, and then you try and cry racism, sexism, you need to look back at where you started in the first place, which was where? With race, sex, gender, etc. Anyway, guys, what are y'all's thoughts about this? Do you just, do you even care about the Mary Sue at this point? Do you even care with this? I mean, do you think that they have anything wise to say here? Do you think that the next Big Bang Theory, that the next thing about nerd culture needs to be written by women starring just women? I mean, when you just look to the evidence of what we have before us, guess what happens? It just doesn't work. Why do you think one of the reasons why Jessica Jones is seen almost universally by men, women of various backgrounds as one of the weaker Marvel shows because they cared so much, especially this last season, they cared so much more about making sure that every episode was written by a woman rather than making sure that every episode was made by the best person for the job. That is the problem that we're seeing in Hollywood, not just in movies, but also with our television shows. So let me know your thoughts below. I would love to hear them. Also, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe. Please share this video as well if you liked it. I'd appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. Have a great day. And as always, God bless.